In the early 60s, America was in the midst of a space race, launching satellites and manned spacecraft to the moon and planets. Surprisingly, the ideas in Man and Dolphin struck a chord with American astronomers who were searching for extraterrestrial life. They were led by Frank Drake. It was a very exciting book because it had these new ideas, and particularly the idea that there could be creatures as intelligent and sophisticated in their thinking as us. Drake and his team were part of an official government-funded project using radio telescopes to listen for signals from other intelligent life in the galaxy. For them, Lily's work was potentially groundbreaking. The possible intelligence of dolphins was of special interest to me and the others who were interested in extraterrestrial intelligent life because we wanted, we wanted to understand as much as we could about what the challenges were going to be in communicating with other intelligent species. Astronomer Carl Sagan was also part of the SETI team. Uh, it's possible, but by no means certain, that life uh, uh, on many of these planets evolves into beings which are uh, as advanced as we or more advanced. Lilly realized the astronomer's interest opened up a new opportunity for funding. Lilly brilliantly pitches the Space Administration on the idea that they need a model organism upon which to experiment for the prospect of an encounter with aliens. In 1961, NASA and other government agencies gave financial backing for Lilly to construct a state-of-the-art laboratory. The modern white villa was known as the Dolphin House. 